All right, let's get started. Hi, everyone. My name is Tommy Lee, and I'm the Senior Manager of Recruiting at Gibson Dunn & Crutcher. And I also have the honor and privilege of serving as president of the Los Angeles Area Legal Recruitment Association, or LARA. For those joining us, thank you for your interest in our legal recruiting industry. I always joke that this industry is one of the best kept secrets in corporate America. Um, the majority of us have blessedly stumbled into this field, so we really wanted to create an opportunity for a more informed pathway for those interested programs like this. So the panelists and I have to say are here to tell you why this industry has been so satisfying and rewarding for us, to find some insight into what it actually is, and to give you a few tips on how to get your foot in the door and succeed in it. For this panel, I'll start with some introduction, proceed with a few questions for our panelists, and if we have time, answer some questions that you may have. So throughout the program, please feel free to submit any questions in the Q&A box at the bottom. So without further delay, I would like to bring in our awesome panelists who, honestly, guys, are seriously four of my favorite professionals in this industry. So for all panelists, please take a minute uh, to introduce yourselves, tell us where you're currently working, your position, and at what, what point in your career did you start when you were recruiting? And lastly, how many years have you been in the industry? So let's start with Natalie. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to spend time today to speak to everyone. Um, my name is Natalie Martinez. I am the Associate Director of Recruiting and Professional Development at Allen Matkins. Allen Matkins is a law firm that has approximately 225 attorneys across five offices right now in California. Um, we have a summer program. We hire actively in the lateral program. I um, attended University of California, Santa Barbara, go Gauchos, and um, right after college, I came right into the industry, took six months and started in legal recruiting, and I have never looked back, so that's my intro. And how about Karen? Hi, everyone. I'm Karen Magtas. I'm the Senior Manager of Attorney Development and Recruiting at Skadden Arps. Skadden is a global law firm with over 1,700 attorneys in 21 offices on four continents. Um, I went to UCLA and coming out of college, I intended to further my you know, education in psychology, but ended up in the legal field as a paralegal, thinking I might want to go to law school instead. But you know, after working as a paralegal for five years, I decided I wanted to take a different route. And one of the partners I worked for was a hiring partner of the firm. And given his busy schedule, much of his responsibilities as hiring partner fell onto me. So I quickly transitioned from a paralegal to a legal recruiter um, and have been doing so and have been doing this role for over 25 years now at uh, various firms. Thank you, Karen. And um, Audrea Fryer. Yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Audrea Fryer. I am the Regional Recruiting Coordinator at Baker McKinsey. I recruit for our three California offices, which include San Francisco, Palo Alto, and Los Angeles. And I also recruit for a Chicago office. Uh, Baker McKinsey is a global firm. So we have over 6,500 attorneys in 46 countries, um, and 14 of those offices are based in the U.S., um, I joined legal recruiting much like Natalie, straight out of undergrad. I graduated from the University of Colorado Boulder in 2021, so still fresh, um, and have been in legal recruiting ever since. Thanks, Adrian. And, and, and on the law school side of things, we have Rachel. Thanks, Tommy. And I'm Rachel Chronic Rothbard. I'm the Director of Career Services at the University of Southern California, Gould School of Law, fight on. And I loving being part of this panel because I'm hearing where my colleagues came from and how they came into legal recruiting. Uh, I uh, went to Brandeis University and then went straight to law school and went to the University of Miami uh, School of Law. Graduated, I love to say, I'm proud to say last century. I practiced law um, for over 13 years, both in Florida and in California. I'm licensed in both states. I came um, to the Career Services Office in 2009. What a great time to be in, at, in law school career services uh, and haven't looked back. I've been in career services for 13 and a half years. Time flies when you're having fun. 
and I'm excited about this panel. Thank you, Rachel. Um, and so really, let's start with the basics. Uh, you know, what is legal recruiting? And you also hear about recruiting in so many other industries. So, so let's start with um, uh, Karen, like what really separate, what is legal recruiting? So um, legal or law firm recruiting, at least in my, my regard, um, it's a niche, a niche industry. Um, as law firm recruiters, we wear multiple hats. We're administrators, guidance counselors, event planners, strategizers, marketers, and gatekeepers of the firm. Uh, most of you may hear the term recruiter and you think a person who goes out and seeks out as many candidates to fill a position. The relationship there is really mostly transactional, but in legal recruiting, the relationship between us and a candidate is relational. Our relationship with the candidate goes beyond placement. Our roles depend a lot on relationship building. We have to be more discerning as it's not about quantity, but rather quality. In fact, we generally don't have to go out and seek, but are generally managing interests from a high volume of law students and practicing lawyers. Um, we are the gatekeepers and have to ensure the candidates who come through our doors meet certain criteria, both technically and culturally for the firm. Most law firms hire their lawyers directly from law school. They also hire laterally, meaning hiring practicing lawyers, but the majority of the pipeline comes from law school recruiting. So we interface a lot with law students beginning in their first year of law school. And that means we develop relationships with students early in their law school life to hopefully hire them into our summer internship program, which we also run, and eventually as young associates once they graduate. So this makes our roles as legal recruiters very unique, exciting, and very rewarding. Yeah, Natalie. Yeah, I think with legal recruiting as well, it's so different. So we we work at law firms that have several partners. There may be 10 partners compared to 100 partners, but they are all owners of a company versus recruiting for a company that has maybe one owner. So our recruiting is more bespoke with just our industry, our law firm, um, and we, as Karen noted, we don't hire in volume. We rather hire the right person. So we're looking for a specific skill set for a specific opening. Um, we may get hundreds of candidates for one open position, but that one person, that hire, may take a full year to even find the right person for that position. So there's a lot more due diligence with our end of recruiting, I would have to say. Um, and it's it's very specific in that sense where again we are working and working collaboratively we're working together with several owners of a law of a company right so several partners if we're hiring for a practice group it is several people that are agreeing on the hire um so the process takes a little bit longer and we do also hire law firms have summer programs so we are looking we're forecasting hires two to three years out. So we're very early in someone's career. The relationship building is almost the, the minute, the first year of law school. As soon as they're done with that first quarter, first semester, their finals, we are right there, you know, getting to know them. So um, I think those are kind of the differences that I see with legal recruiting versus recruiting in general. Audrey, anything to add on that front? I mean, man, they covered the bases, I think. Um, <laughs> um, no, no, I think it's really important, though, to to kind of hang on to that point of the, you know, influence that you have as a recruiter on on someone's on a law student's career. Again, it starts when their first year of law school, which before I came into legal recruiting, I didn't realize you're getting your job at that point after your first year. And so uh, we play a really vital role in students' lives, but also in terms of, you know, selling and advocating on behalf of the firms. And that's a good segue. You know, the, the four of us um, that have spoken are, are from the law firm side. So, Rachel, how is it different on the law school side of things? So, the, I like to call myself some maybe like recruiter adjacent, but more importantly, I think I, I'm educator. Right. And in the sense that I have relationships with all of my panelists here, uh, but my job is working both with students um, and alumni. Uh, and so and 
what I do in my role as an educator is I have I am guiding students and alumni through many, multiple different paths. So it may be that some a, a group of my students I'll be introducing or you know developing programs or working with my colleagues from the large law firm side, but I'm also developing relationships with small and mid-sized firms uh, because some of our students pursue those paths or alums work, pursue those paths. Uh, I also am working with student populations that are pursuing government opportunities or uh, working at um, legal nonprofits. I am also working with students and alumni who may not be going to practice law, but maybe they want to do a, a career path of what we call JD Advantage, where the JD is helpful and essential, but they don't have to be bar. Uh, they don't have to be barred. I mean, they don't have to have their license to practice law in, in a certain state. And sometimes I work with populations of students that are looking at, to get out of the law in general. Um, you know, jokingly, sometimes, or not jokingly, sometimes folks call my office the placement office. Um, and unfortunately, I don't have like a place where I can take, you know, student A and plop them at law firm X. Um, so I really work with students and alums um, to help them empower them to find their path um, to careers. And so you, you will wear a lot of hats, and that's what I'm getting from on both sides. And, and what I love about it is that that whole strategy element, um, you know, all the events and also, you know, that whole relationship building and inspiring others. I think that's just so fulfilling in both our issues. So, so Rachel, you know, let's start with you here. You know, you do wear a lot of hats. So it sounds like, you know, is there a day in the life of a, a, a law school uh, placement uh, career services officer? <laughs> um, I like to say I make my to-do list every morning. Um, and if you could see, I have like little boxes for myself, for me to check off things. And like, I look at the end of the day, there aren't too many boxes checked. Um, so, uh, because I, I think at the, I don't know if there's a typical day, so to speak. And oftentimes whatever I hit, you know, a typical day might involve student appointments, uh, meetings with employers, um, attending programs, et cetera. But what I would say is while there's no necessarily typical day, I find that the year in the world of career services is very cyclical. Meaning I know that in the, in the summer, I'm gonna be working a lot with many of my students who will be applying to the wonderful firms represented here. Um, I might also be working with students who are pursuing public service fellowships. Um, in the fall, I might be bringing in my new 1L class that's coming in. So not a, really a typical day, but a year that is pretty cyclical. I know what happens every season. And that, that, that there's sort of similarities there, right, Karen, with the whole cyclical aspect of recruiting even on the law firm side. What do you think? Right. I wouldn't call it a day in the life. I'd call it the cycle in the life of a legal recruiter um, because that's what it is. I mean, it's very busy. I think it's busy all the time. It just depends on what cycle you're in. Um, mm -hmm. And because most of our role is about building relationships and networking, we are always coordinating outreach events with various law schools or planning programming, communicating internally and externally and preparing for our summer internship programs. And then what we call the recruiting season, which usually immediately follows the end of the summer program. So it's a constant process, always planning and hiring for the following year. Um, many firms also recruit first year law students um, for their general summer program or a DEI scholarship. So this happens shortly after the recruiting season. So if I were to break it down in quarters, I would say that Q1 is, let's say, first year law, law school um, First year law student recruiting and student outreach. Q2 is continued student outreach and preparing for and executing our summer internship programs. Q3 is finishing out the summer program and beginning the recruiting season, though many firms now are beginning their recruiting season in Q2. And then, then Q4 is really cleaning up the mess from Q1 through Q3, budgeting, strategizing for the following year and then hopefully taking a vacation. Um, and then there's more to it than this, but this is basically the gist, um, at least on the side of uh, recruiting law students. And then there's the lateral recruiting side of things, but um, but that's not as involved. So that's just a brief overview of the cycles that we go through. Certification, so I got very excited. Because um, <laughs> we're, we're right in the, in the middle of the busy season. So, so Natalie, like if, if there's so much going on throughout the year, 
And how would you describe a day? Ooh, that's a hard one. So I think, <laughs> I mean, as someone who's come from very large firms, so I have AMLA 100 and AMLA 200 backgrounds. So I've been at very large firms with numerous time zones. We're lucky right now, Alan Mackins is one time zone PT. So I wake up, I think a day in life, I check my emails and I think we've all kind of, that is part of legal recruiting. The first thing we do is check our emails as hard as that sounds. Um, check our emails and we get to, you have to learn, I think, as you progress in this career, you start to prioritize. And what are what is your morning look like? And for me, after 10 years of doing this, I I break my day up into quarters. I now even from the year, I break my day into quarters. So the morning's the high high priority priority that I know I need to get up in the morning so I can get answers out by the day, by end of day. Um, and you're just dealing with phone calls, answering questions, if it's from students, it's from laterals, um, it's also the due, due diligence, so conflicts, background checks. There's a lot of admin, strategy, um, also dealing with your practice group leaders internally as you progress in this career, you start to take on more leadership roles. So your day-to-day -day starts to change as you elevate through this profession. Um, but that's just a quick little snapshot. Oh, it's, it's a lot, but um, and and you mentioned in you know Rachel, Karen, and Natalie, you've been in this industry for over a decade or more. Um, but Audrey, you're you're in you know the first few years of your career. So how is that different in terms of how you view your day in the life? Yeah, um, yeah, still very junior. I'm going on my second year, two months shy of it. Um, so I would say, I mean, there's a lot of similarities, I'll, I'll say. I feel like a lot of, you know, even my managers do a lot of the small, minuscule things that I do. Um, so again, we can start off with emails. Um, you're always emailing. Um, and when we're talking about in terms of the cycle, though, so for 1L and 2L recruiting in the recruiting season, um, I'm, you know, finding attorneys to schedule, to do interviews, um, reaching out to candidates to find out what times work for them, um, comparing schedules, um, for law school events, I'm, you know, help coordinating, you know, which attorneys are going to attend. If it's in, if it's internal, uh, catering, booking conference rooms, uh, name tags, um, they, you know, the devil's in the details. There's so many things that go in to even event planning within itself, which is one thing I learned coming in here that although event planning sounds easy, it has so many intricacies to it. Um, and yeah, it definitely takes a good attention to detail. Um, for summer program planning, you know, you start off, thinking and looking for trendy, fun summer program ideas, um, trying to stay hip with law students. Also, I think the worst thing is when your summer associates tell you about what another law firm's doing, and it's so much cooler. Um, so you're, you're trying to avoid that and making sure that you're doing a lot of fun stuff too. So planning events, uh, working with vendors, assigning mentors for the summer associates, you know, junior and senior mentors, making sure that they're, you know, being acclimated to the firm through trainings, um, having lunches, keeping up with them, making sure they're having a good summer experience, um, planning their evaluations, uh, midterm and end of year evaluations. Um, and then I would just say overall, you know, as a recruiter, your, your main job is to, you know, continue to build relationships with law schools. Um, and that can look different in various ways, whether that's taking your CSOs out to lunch, um, you know, and just keeping up with them, figuring out what they're doing at their law school, what they've heard from previous summer associates from our firm, what we can do better. Um, building relationships with attorneys and partners is really key. Um, that's a day to day thing. Um, and that's important, especially on days when someone randomly drops out of an interview and tells you two minutes before, and you have to have that one yes attorney that you can always go to. And so definitely building relationships with attorneys and partners um, and your team members, you know, it's really important to be a good team member in this field. Um, we all have different offices we're overseeing. We all have so many different projects going on, different schools we oversee. Um, so it's really important to be an asset to your team. And I think that's really important to be a successful recruiter. Um, and then to, you know, getting to know your firm, knowing your firm's culture, how to sell your firm, your selling points, um, knowing your practice groups very well and knowing the legal industry, you know, in your location for me, I have to know the legal industry in California and Chicago um, and who are our competitor firms in the different areas. So there's definitely a lot that goes into it. And again, day-to-day uh, -day is definitely based on what, what step you're at in the cycle. 
Well, I think there's a lot of day to day and there's a lot to do, but it definitely, you know, um, once you kind of figure out how to manage this cycle, it becomes so rewarding. So, and I also saw, um, you know, Rachel's face light up when they, she said, uh, Adria said, taking CSOs to lunch. So we all need to take Rachel out to lunch after this. <laughs> um, and so, you know, Adria started talking about some of the good stuff. And, you know, right now we've presented a very busy picture. Um, but we also want to tell you that all of this busyness brings us so much fulfillment, joy, and rewards to our life. So um, let's start with you again. Let's start with you, Andrea. Like, what is rewarding to you about your career at this moment? Yeah, um, I would say one of the most rewarding pieces of being a recruiter is watching these summer associates who tend to come in so timid and shy and nervous um, slowly throughout the summer program bloom into these really, you know, outgoing, um, smart, intelligent, and later on first year attorneys. Um, so it's it's awesome to see that. It's awesome to be a part of their growth. Um, I would say the mentorship aspect of being a recruiter, I've been really, really lucky at my firms where, you know, not only partners, but my colleagues and managers have really taken on a mentorship role in my life that applies to work, but also a little bit outside of work. And it's really awesome. You know, as a recruiter, each firm has, you know, an invested interest in making sure that you're a successful recruiter. You are client facing, you're selling the firm to students. And so, you know, they have a vested interest in making sure that you're doing well and you're in a good place and that you're feeling like you're good on your career tra trajectory. And so as a result, um, a lot of people are reaching out, constantly checking in. Um, and so there's a beautiful mentorship aspect to it also. Yeah, and, and Karen, you've been in this industry much longer. So how does it continue to be rewarding for you? Apparently, it is very rewarding. As otherwise, I wouldn't have been in this industry <laughs> for as long as I've been in it. But again, yeah, I mean, it is a relationship building, you know, industry. And I have built so many great relationships with attorneys that I've helped bring into the firm or firms, as well as you know, undergraduate students and law students who I we didn't ultimately hire, but I kept in touch with because I've sort of mentored them and guided them through the process um, and or have had informational meetings or, you know, coffees with them. And they kept me in the loop um, uh, with their career trajectory. And it's been wonderful. But also, you know, just want, being a mentor to my young the junior colleagues that I <laughs> sort of befriended or hired <laughs> in this industry, such as Tommy, uh, and watching him grow and flourish and thrive into an amazing uh, recruiting professional, um, that is super rewarding. So really, it is to see just the progress of people who just come into this industry or as lawyers and really move up the ranks and become, you know, leaders in the industry. Oh, Karen, you're going to make me cry. I'm just indebted to you. You are such a champion for so many people, and I'm just grateful to have you in my life. Thank you. <laughs> um, and let's stick to the law firm side, Natalie. How You've been in the industry over 10 years. Um, what, is, what are some of the perks and benefits that stand out to you? Perks and benefits? I mean, I... Legal recruiting has been my only career, um, so there's obviously perks and benefits here. I think there's a sense of stability within your profession. Um, we also, our benefits are always market, so you always have top benefits. Um, you also have this, you know, mentorship, and as many of, you know, Karen and everyone has mentioned that it's you get to watch people grow and flourish. I think that's been such a great thing for me as a um, first generation, uh, first gen business professional coming into this industry. I never, I didn't really have the counseling of how to get through college and like what the next path was and law school and all of those things. So I, you know, entered this industry as an internship. And falling into recruiting where we have this semi quasi, you know, counselor effect on people has been for me the most rewarding part of this position where we are recruiting summer associates. And when I mentioned Bespoke, during that time in the recruiting, the student recruiting, we're really recruiting for our firm. So, you know, understanding our culture of the firm that you work at and what really will thrive in that culture and watching those attorneys now that again I've been here over 
doing this over 10 years, friends that I've made during the summer associate program are now partners at the firms to watch them become partners and leaders at their firms. Again, that's another rewarding thing. So I think there's so many facets of what can be rewarding to be used specifically in this profession. Yeah, and, and besides, uh, I mean, uh, we'll get to the law school side of things in a little bit, Rachel, but I, I just wanted to share too that, you know, for me, I, I was in the nonprofit industry for over 17 years. And for me to transfer into corporate America, it was a very scary thing. But when I joined, I realized, you know, there were, so many things, so many commonalities. I mean, you know, law firms do so much wonderful pro bono work. I mean, for instance, at Gibson, they're the reasons I'm able to marry my husband. So that was such a meaningful transition for me. Um, you know, uh, Natalie mentioned uh, stability. You know, there's good money, excellent benefits. It definitely, you know, um, for me, we joined the legal recruiting job for the reasons that many attorneys see, which is kind of a really nice thing as well. So, Rachel, how about you? What about the law school side of things? Well, I, I do want to clear something. I think that sometimes my students think like summer break comes and then we get the whole break off or spring break comes. That is not true. Let me just say, if <laughs> once you graduate from school and enter the workforce, there's no more summer breaks. There's no more winter breaks. So I will say, um, you know, in terms of working in academia, you know, it's really a privilege to work here at the University of Southern California. Um, the law school is a tremendous law school. If I want to attend a workshop or a lecture from a faculty member, you know, just for intellectual curiosity, I can do that. Um, it does, it of course helps that I work with my colleagues. Um, I call them my CSO family. So I work with really good people and really smart people and really caring people. And I think that's really important since we spend most of our waking hours with the people we work with. It's a good thing to work with the people you like and you respect. And I, I uh, tremendously respect and like um, my my colleagues. Um, I I think that also in terms of, um, in addition to kind of personally the the rewarding part is not just working with my in addition to working with my CSO family, I've relation I've built relationships with my colleagues at law firms at many types of employers. My um, personality is I'm I think I am a relationship builder and a, a people connector and so this position really plays to one of those strengths of mine which is to make connections just locally statewide even nationally so I I really um, appreciate that part of my job I I will also say on the on the school side, which is I've been able to develop great relationships with my students who are my students for three years. And but as I tell them, you know, you're my student for three years, but you're an alum for life. And so I've been able to, um, you know, keep those connections with my students who become attorneys. Um, and um, you know, I think we'll talk later about our proud moments, but uh, you know, just watching the, um, my students progress through their careers. That gives me a lot of satisfaction. You made my job so easy. My next question to everyone is literally, how do you feel supported in legal recruiting? You know, you mentioned about that community you have in law school. Let's turn to the firm side. Um, Natalie, um, how do you feel supported? It sounds like a very stressful job. Um, how do you feel supported internally and externally? Yeah, so internally, I will say, I mentioned a little how I got into this industry as a internship. It was three months at a very large law firm. Um, my director at that time, she signed me up for Laura and it was the first time I will always remember this. I walked into our first Laura meeting and I realized that there is a community of people that everyone is going through the same issues, same problems. We all, you can talk about a certain subject and they know exactly what you're talking about. I think it was that moment when I started to attend Laura that I knew that this was the industry for me. I was, there was no, it was, what else can I do? How do I, now how do I grow in this career? Because once you start to get your foot through the door and you start to gain your mentors through the industry, um, you start to see that there is a path. There's a uh, st stability and there's a path 
and it's similar to lawyers, right? Where, you know, you move up the ladder. And um, so, yeah, I think it was just joining those groups. Um, I've, you know, been across a few different firms. So I'm lucky to say that my directors at all of these firms are now mentors. Anytime I have a big life decision, I do give them a call. Um, so yeah, I think it's in our industry. I think that is very different than maybe other recruiting industries or other opportunities in corporate America. And I know it's not just Los Angeles. I'm, you know, we have the Bay Area, we have Orange County, we have San Diego. In all of these cities, there is something similar where it is a network of individuals that like to, that want to share um, information and be supportive of one another. Such a special community, and I, I felt the same way. Um, Atreya, as a younger professional, do you feel that sense of community? Absolutely. And and to Natalie's point, and it goes beyond California. There are city groups in many, many cities, which was really, really cool for me to learn. Um, and oftentimes, you know, our different recruiters, we get on our weekly recruiting call and we talk about, OK, what did we talk about? What did your city groups talk about? And we kind of, you know, bounce you know information off of each other, of what we learn from our colleagues in our city. So, um, yeah, no, you know, the city groups are amazing. Um, I have the privilege of co-chairing the diversity committee for Mara, and I I definitely feel amazingly supported there. Um, it is such a great group and we all get to come together, you know, once a month and really brainstorm about things that we care about and that we're passionate about and hopefully, you know, create processes and programs to, to be leaders in, you know, the diversity space in legal recruiting. So definitely feel supported there. Um, I think now is super amazing. Um, you know, I went to my first NALP conference a couple of months ago and while I was there, I got to meet a, meet a group of girls who recruit for Chicago. And I currently recruit for Chicago, but I'd never been. I'd been once at that point. It was because my firm sent me. So planning the summer program was really daunting. I was like, I've never been to the city. I don't know what's fun. I don't know what's trendy. I don't know things that I have to think about, like weather and there it's like wind, like who would ever know I have to think about wind when I'm planning an outside event. So they they have definitely, I mean, they've helped me so much in planning my Chicago summer program. Um, and we're also having a girls trip in September. So, you know, not only do they help me on a, on a work side, but, you know, on a friendship building side too. Yeah, and for all those uh, wondering what now, that is, it's our National Association of Legal Placement. So every year there's different conferences that are taking place in, beautiful cities like Vancouver that just happened two weeks ago. And they're really great um, experiences to really get to meet other recruiters nationally, exchange ideas, um, opportunities for professional development and all that stuff. And so, Mary, you know, um, you manage teams. You've been managing teams for a long time. How, how do you internally create these supportive environments for your younger professionals? I'm sorry, you were, you were, you, you. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, I'm saying that, you know, you've, you've been in this industry as a manager for quite a while. Um, how are you creating these uh, nurturing uh, environments for younger professionals? Well, you know, I work collabor collaboratively with my team and, you know, it's not my way or the highway. It's really, you know, I need, I need their energy and their you know, obviously they're younger than me. I have a certain mindset and things and I grew up in a certain era and I really need to be in touch with what's going on now and it's current. And so they are really, they have a seat at the table when it comes to decision-making for our department. Um, and I definitely support them and try to put them, make them feel visible and heard. Um, and so I do delegate a lot of projects um, to each of them for them to lead and to present, you know, so it's really, I'm not, at least with the teams that I've always managed, it's usually giving them that responsibility, but not taking all that work from them and presenting it as my own. I'm, it's usually, I let them shine. I mean, I've been doing this long enough. I don't need to shine, right? I mean, I mean, I shine. I'll shine in different other ways, you know. But you shine all always, Karen. So that's <laughs> so. So that's a good segue again. You guys are making it so easy for me. Um, in terms of shining in this industry, you know, Natalie, are there any particular traits or characteristics that make someone more successful or well suited to this industry? Yeah, I think someone that is personable because you are dealing with people 
all day in person, on the phone. Um, so personable, you have to be a team player. You will be, you know, taking on roles and tasks as you progress through your career that you may think you shouldn't be handling, but everyone knows in this industry, it's just get the job done. So team player, um, you also, and I hate to say this, but I'm going to be honest, you need to have a thick skin. Uh, you need to be able to separate your personal and your professional. Um, I think even one of the questions that we are monitoring the questions, by the way, and we'll get to them. But one of the questions, um, how do you handle big personality personalities and partners can be delivered when filling roles? I think that's a trait, right? Where you're able to deal with personalities. And, you know, I learned very early on, will do. And if you don't know the answer, I will circle back. Um, but it's just providing a customer service where you are responding, you are letting them know that you're on top of it and you're gonna get the job done. So it's someone proactive, organized. Um, I think those are the traits that really make you successful in this profession. Yeah, I always joke that I'm still in donor relations and I probably will always be in donor relations. So <laughs> Karen, what, what else? <laughs> Um, well, you know, I think that you should also be creative because we're, you know, we are putting together many events um, and we're marketing in way in many ways. So being creative, definitely adaptable. Um, things change in a second. <laughs> and, and as Andrea Andreas mentioned, somebody will cancel on an interview schedule two minutes before, and now you've got to figure out what to do. So I guess problem solver, <laughs> great problem solver. Um, very patient and very empathetic. Um, you know, you're many times you're speaking with either young attorneys or law students who are nervous and, and you want to help them feel comfortable. Right. And you want to see them succeed. And so you have to learn to listen and understand where they're coming from and help guide. Um, and, you know, it, and, you know, as we have mentioned, yeah, there are a lot of very big and sometimes difficult personalities uh, in this industry. So you have to have the right temperament. Um, you have to know this is not personal. Um, you know, you're both on the same team and you both want the same, you know, have both have the same goals. And so you know, just feel very, uh, really, you have to feel really confident in yourself um, and and really present in that way and be very, and, and show a lot of grace, right? So um, it's not easy, but yeah, I think you would just deal with difficult personalities just in life in general. It's just a good way sort of to lead your life. <laughs> yeah. um, I, there's so many others. I mean, really emotional intelligence. I think, you know, there's that as well. I'm, I'm sure Rachel has another list given her position on, on various traits that are helpful. Yeah, Rachel, what about on the law school side of things? So I just want to say to all the traits, all of the above, um, because I, I think that does help one be successful in this industry. Uh, I, you know, I was making some notes ahead of time. And, and my first one was emotional intelligence. And I think that, you know, there are different kinds of IQs or, you know, cues, so to speak. And the EQ um, quotient is, is so, I think, crucial, especially in the world of law school. Because again, I'm, I consider myself an educator and really working with students. Many of them come from backgrounds where they may not have any lawyers in their law in their lives. So helping them understand different pathways. Um, and really, when I see students, I often compare them to onions. They're they're multi layered um, folks. Um, and aren't we all right? So it's working to help students find their paths and their strengths and help them improve if well, improve their weaknesses, uh, should they have any. Um, I also find an important trait that I have to have is being able to have a challenging or difficult conversation. Sometimes working with students, you know, where um, what they thought they were going to be doing may not be what they're going to be doing. So we have to be flexible and nimble and come up with other pathways or other um, 
uh, paths for them to follow. And um, let me just say, I also think learning from mistakes, um, because as I always share, every day I'm learning on the job. Um, every day I'm working on my 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 student skill set or my working with faculty or working with other colleagues because I know I'm not perfect. And so sometimes I might say something that was not intending to come off harsh, but it did. And so learning how to craft or give the message um, in, in a more constructive fashion. Um, and I think that also goes to knowing your audience, whether it's your students, it's um, law firms, it's faculty, it's other administrators and knowing, you know, what they're looking for from you. Some folks are going to want data, data to prove your point, or some folks are going to be looking for more the the, the policy behind that. And so knowing how to deliver or craft those kinds of messages. Um, and I think oftentimes what I am doing, I'll share is I'm advocating. Um, and that is advocating with, again, lots of different audiences. It could be with my dean uh, asking, you know, for funding for a program. It could be with law firms saying, I really think you should hire so and so. Or, even talking to employers who might not be interested at first in my students, somehow I'm always trying to, you know, you know, you really should be interested in our students. And let me tell you why they're so awesome and so great. So all of the above to what my colleague said, and then just a few more things. Yeah, Rachel, I love that whole, you know, we talk about, you know, in many ways, this is a sales job, you know, um, for, for both of us. And, you know, we just got a question and they said, how do you, from, from, from our attendees saying, how do you improve your storytelling? And I, I think it really is, like you said, like figuring out who your audience is, is, but also kind of figuring out your voice. I think your voice, we always tell our law students that they have to be authentic. We have to be authentic as well. Like you have to find a approach, a voice that works. So, you know, I always also joke that, you know, being loud isn't, a, you know, always the best thing. You know, if you're more of an introvert, you got to find what works for you. So, um, you know, I, I think in terms of storytelling, there's many ways of doing it, but really practicing and figuring out how to be authentic would be my, my, my uh, two cents. So, um, Audrey, I want to give you an opportunity to chime in. What what has worked for you? You've had such a wonderful career in your first two years. Yeah, yeah. I loved your last comment um, for sure because I think that there's a person, there's a place for everyone in recruiting, no matter what your personality is. It's really advantage to be very personable, outgoing not timid. Um, but there's also, we're recruiting plenty of law students who are timid and who are shy and who will confide in recruiters that, you know, have their same working style. Um, so I, I love that comment. But one of our first questions is what is the top five hard skills as a recruiting coordinator in order for you to set yourself up for success? Um, I think coming into this role, the number one thing would probably be attention to detail. Um, it's, I mean, that knit me in the butt for my first couple of months. Um, let me tell you, if you send something out and it has some type of typo, those attorneys are going to rip you apart and in a good way, in a good way. Um, but lots of constructive feedback. So it's it's really good to, to really pay attention to the things that you're doing. Um, know the processes, know everything that goes into it, what goes into a successful event, what goes into a successful interview, um, so on and so forth. So attention to detail, I would say, Time management is really important. Again, um, you know, we're on a cycle and our busy season is really busy. And oftentimes you're doing so many different things. And for us now, we're, you know, in the middle of planning a summer and executing a summer program, but also recruiting for our next summer program at the same time. And it can be a lot. And so it's really important to figure out what works for you in terms of time management. I know for me, I, I just kept forgetting the small things like, but it's kind of slipped through the cracks. And so what I do now is I put a calendar hold for every to-do list thing that I have that day. And so I, you know, I put time on there and I know that for this time, I'm going to be dedicated to this project, this email, whatever it is. Um, don't get me wrong. I move them around often, um, but it's it's always there. And I also have, you know, a, a to-do list. So, you know, having good, good time management and a good way to, to manage the different processes that are going on. Um, I'm going to go back to it. I know it's been said a lot, but being communicative and adaptable. Um, it is, it is definitely a skill to learn to navigate different personalities. And, you know, some attorneys want you to write out a long list of all the students they're going to see, their interests, 
And some just want like the names and they'll figure the rest out. And so it's it, you, it's really learning your attorneys, their working style, what they want to see from you and adapting. Um, I have a notes on my computer that just says attorney notes. And it's just notes that I know about each attorney and what they like. Um, and that helps me a lot when I'm, you know, whether it's an event that I'm planning and I know that this attorney, you know, lives in this area. And so it might be easier for them to get there or this attorney is pescatarian. And so so things like that, um, that's been really, really helpful for me. Um, being a team player always, again, we work on teams. Um, that's really important. It's hard to go down to five, um, but I think having confidence is really important. And that's something that I had to learn throughout this process. Um, it's daunting dealing with attorneys. You know, they have JDs, they're super smart. And I think, you know, at first I kind of came in really, really timid, but you you have to have a voice because again, you're an advocate. You're an advocate for yourself, number one. Um, you're an advocate for the firm. And then on some to some extent, you're also an advocate for your summer associates. And so finding your voice and kind of finding that confidence is really important. And I think you'll see a lot of respect from attorneys um, comes after that. So those would be my top five. Yeah, Can I, I add like to that, Tommy? I mean, just because I've had to mentor many, you know, <laughs> I would add, like, have pretty strong writing skills. Mm -hmm. um, again, you're working with lawyers. They're great writers. Um and so, uh, you know, and part of that also is this attention, you know, having, making sure you spell correctly and, you know, the typos. Um, I would put that on as one of the top hard skills, is like good writing skills, um, just because I've, I've seen the reactions um, and this is the industry. Where I was going to add, Audrey, as you were talking, becoming the thought leader, the, the, the subject matter expert, you know, in your in your in your space, um, not that you're, you know, that 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 the attorneys at the firms are going to look to you to say what what should we be looking for. Um, and I think those are that that's a all of using all of these skills is how you become that and how you become a trusted member and a valued member of 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 your firm and of your recruiting team. Yeah, and I also like to say that, that that takes time. So, you know, allow yourself the opportunity and agency and grace to make mistakes, to learn from them, to gain that institutional knowledge. I promise you, if you make it through a year, that second year is going to feel wonderful. And the wars will come and the applications to persevere. Um, but let's get to the good stuff. Let's get to the nuggets. You know, now we've sold them. I'm sure everyone on this uh, uh, webinar is just dying to apply for a, a recruiting job right now. So how do they get their foot in the door? And Natalie? Yeah, so getting your foot through the door, there are plenty of opportunities. Um, if you are looking for a specific city, you can always look at NALP. I think all of us here on the law firm and law school side, if there's an opportunity, one of the first job postings that we post on is NALP. So, that is kind of your go-to. We also LinkedIn. Um, I also think you you should be confident and be able to send that email on LinkedIn, make the connection. If you see that someone is posting the job position and there may be a connection of who posted it or who's recruiting for the position, feel free to send a LinkedIn message. Obviously, you know, check your grammar. It should be professional. But most of us are happy to pick up the phone and have a 30-minute call, 15-minute call, because we want to hire and recruit the best teammate to join us, right? So I think, you know, do not be scared, pick up the phone, make those phone calls, do your due diligence. How we do our due diligence on hires for laterals, for summers, this is your job. You should take that extra step and in initiative by researching the firm, you know, go on their website, learn a little bit about them, um, then do the outreach. And if there's an opportunity, speak regarding that outreach and or the opportunity, the open opportunity. Um, but yeah, we are all more than happy to provide guidance and um, I'm always happy to pick up the phone or jump on a Zoom with somebody who's interested in, in recruiting. Well, we're running out of a little bit of time, so I'm going to jump right over to Rachel. Rachel, how about on the law school side of things? How do, how do people you know, get involved with that? 
Well, I would say, again, I agree with Natalie in terms of opportunities being posted to NALP. Um, I will also mention that these types of opportunities will be posted directly on the university's website for positions um, we are required to, but it's also a great way for you to, if you're looking to get into the law school world, to um, make it a habit to look at university postings. But I, I also want to just echo what what Natalie said, which is these informational interviews are so valuable. Uh, I know that before coming into this world of career services, I had an informational interview with the then um, Dean of Career Services, uh, Graham Schur from Loyola Law School. I, I credit him uh, for helping me um, come into this industry. And so it really helps you get a perspective of what um, is, what is the world of career services? And for those of you interested in either working for a law firm or potentially working for a law school, I'd encourage you to reach out to both school side and uh, to firms um, because though we are in the same industry, a little of what we what I do is a little different than what uh, Karen does. And so getting a better picture, I, mean, I have seen people go from law school to firm, firm to law school, but it definitely gives you a, a more complete picture and also gives you a sense of what are the news or what's the, the current events in the world of recruiting, because what it was when I joined is very different than what it is today. Yeah, and, and definitely, Rachel, you alluded to this, and, and I would jump to Karen on this one, but we, we're running out of time, but I just want to say that, you know, the recruiting, the paths in the re legal recruiting world have many avenues. So, you know, there's the whole world of professional development that Karen oversees as well, and diversity, uh, equity, and inclusion initiatives that Karen and I'm sure Natalie uh, and Audrey have will all work on. Um, so there are many avenues to do this. You can work for a smaller size firm, you can work for a larger firm, you can think locally, you can think nationally, you can think globally even, with a lot of chief recruiting officers. So the world is your oyster here. So I want to end this. Uh, I pretty much end all my uh, panels with the question, this question, which is, what is your proudest moment in your legal recruiting career? I know it's going to be hard. Um, so I'm going to throw it back to put, keep the spotlight on Rachel. Um, Rachel, what is your proudest moment? Okay, so I have to be the challenging one, and and I bet my colleagues here on the of my co-panelists are also going to say I don't think there's just one proud moment, uh, but just to give you a you know a few snapshots, like a student that comes in that gets their first legal job ever for their one L summer, maybe they prior to law school, just waitress, not just, they waitressed or they they worked on campus and then they get their first legal job, like the, the pride. Um, this Friday is graduation. Um, and so I know I'm gonna be helping with their gowns and I know I'm just one pebble in their path. Um, and, but I, you know, to see them in, when their their caps and gowns is really, I will say, a, a beautiful moment. Um, I've attended weddings of my students. They are now having babies. Uh, also, I'll share when my students go through all three years and then they started as an as an associate, and then I read that they're partner. Um, and that's exciting for me as well because I can remember when they were students and some of my first students are now becoming partners. So that's a pretty um, proud moment. But there, when my students get fellowships, I, I could go, the list, as you can see, is long and numerous. And so that's a, one of the reasons why I find this career so rewarding. And how about you, Natalie? Well, I mean, I can list, lift, lift. And I think same, watching people that you call friends that share life moments with you progress in their career and then you progress in your career just in the same industry. This industry is very small. Once you get your foot in the door, it is very small and everyone knows everybody. So just watching those milestones, that's a proud moment. Um, I think implementing our 1L Diversity Scholar Program here at Allen Mackins as a first gen coming here and we did not have that, watching that and now I'm going on to recruit for my fifth year of that. Um, super, I, that is something I didn't even know that would be a milestone for me. And then I think the last one, someone reminded me of this. I was the acting president of Laura during the pandemic. And the first call when the pandemic hit and we all jumped on the phone and I had to lead that call and I was still young in my career. It was, that reassured me 
and it just affirmed to me that we are all supporting one another and we're all in this together. So that was a proud moment to watch our just city group come together and then on the national platform as well come together. Where on the national platform we were already prepping before the shutdown. Um, I think those are all moments that kind of just I only had a few days to think about it and those were moments that I thought about. Oh, Natalie, I remember that. And you really did lead us through a very difficult time. So we will always be, in, always be indebted to you locally for that. So how about you, Karen? My God, there's too many. I just got I mean, like 20, 25 years. Um, well, okay, on the uh, professional, my professional colleague side is watching people like you, Tommy, who I <laughs> helped recruit in just really, really rise. And, you know, you're doing such a wonderful job. Um, I'm, I'm just so happy for you and to see you in this position now as president of Walra um, and doing such a great job at Gibson Dunn. Um, definitely left it, left Gibson in great, great hands. Um, you know, much of my job now, I'm in attorney development. I do a lot of counseling. And so there's a lot of counseling and speaking to associates, you know, trying to talk them off the ledge and try to keep them from leaving because, you know, they have so much promise and then actually seeing them, watching them stay and then become partner. I mean, it just happened recently where I had a senior lawyer who was just ready to leave. It was just tough. Everything was tough. It's a pandemic. He wasn't sure if he's going to make partner. And, you know, he did, he made it. And when I said, congratulations, he said, you're the reason why I'm, I never left. Right. So I'm like, oh, I guess I did tell say the right things, <laughs> but um, those are. I mean, I, I'm just really proud um, of his accomplishment and anyone that I've been involved with. Uh, the fact that to have an impact in somebody's lives, you know, it, it's it's amazing. It's why I'm still in it. I'm still in this industry. Wonderful, Erin um, and Audrea. How about you? Yeah, um, I put some thought into it, and I think the most memorable moment I have today is probably my last day of my first summer program. Um, so much goes into that and it is a lot. And the whole time you're thinking like, are they going to like this? Are they going to like this event? Was this adequate enough? And there's nothing like it being the last day and everyone, your summers, the attorneys, the partners are, they're all embracing you with hugs and you know you get such sweet comments and the summer associates bring you gifts and say you, you made my summer the best summer and it's it's just the most rewarding feeling um and it makes you know all the hard work sleepless nights some days tears <laughs> um feel worth it so that's probably my most memorable so far thank you Audrey. and and for me it's not my um my, 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 my most rewarding, but it definitely was my favorite moment was when I was at a panel and I had, it was later in the recruiting season and I was with a lot of other firms. And um, when we had the networking portion, I had a group of API students come up to me and said, you know, I need to tell you that it was so amazing to actually see someone that looked like me. And that just, you know, brought some, you know, I, I still have goosebumps and I've told this story about 30 times. It, it just made me feel that this industry is really for everyone. And I think, you know, it, it is such a rewarding industry and I think anyone can really access it would be really celebrated to life. So folks, I, unfortunately we don't have time for questions, but I just want to thank everyone for joining us this evening. We will actually follow this webinar email that you'll have with our contact info if you have any more questions, even some job posts that are locally and nationally, and a link to this recording if you want to share it with your friends, colleagues, families, or if you were so thrilled by it that you want to watch it another 10 times. Um, so I would like to first of all thank all our amazing panelists. Guys, you are the bee's knees. I like love you all so much. Um, thank you for taking the time to share with us your experience and wisdom. Um, much appreciation to the Lara Legal Recruiting Pipeline Committee. This committee works so hard on this, and this is our first initiative. Um, and last but not least, just thank you to my firm, Gibson Dunn and Crusher, for their help in coordinating this event. Um, thank you again, panelists, and have a great night, everyone.